Um, how do you set up? I wouldn't yeah, set up. I, 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 this, some of this might go out. Last, uh, no Christmas Day, but the, uh, no, it was, uh, fuck, wait a minute, it was January this year. January this year, one of my pals is in Cabaret, like the Cabaret down in London way. The musical? Uh, Jesse Buckley and... You were in that? No, one of my pals. Okay. Aye, I was in Cabaret, they were, I've got a bad back. <laughs> like that Sally Bowles picking up pickles were fanny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've said that. So, um, so one of my pals is in it. And said, come and see it, blah, blah, blah. So I went down, drove down, stayed somewhere, saw it, blah, blah, blah. And the show was fucking magic. I mean, it was mind-blowingly magic. Eddie Redmayne was, was trying to describe him, and I was like, he's no... He wasn't like human, he was like an animal or something. The way he was moving everyone, I was like, actually, he was like a lava lamp. So that's what he meant. I was like, the way he was moving, he was just, it was the whole thing was brilliant. She was brilliant, and Jesse Butler was great. And I thought, I'm going to drive back. Like, I was all buzzed after it. I thought, I'm just going to drive back up the road. It's dead quiet. So it was London. I drove back for London. So, and I took the A1, so I went up the east, east side because of where I was in London. Um, and there was a um, car. I'm trying to tell you this story quickly. No, 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 no there's, there's um, no rush in a podcast. You can do what you like. So I came out of London uh, and was just coming out, and there was only a few cars on the roads. It was just after midnight. And um, driving up the A1, and I, I thought, I need to go to the toilet, I need to pee. <laughs> um, and I'll stop somewhere and I'll get petrol. So there's loads of wee petrol stations on the A1, but they're no like your normal big Aye. petrol stations. So I stopped at a petrol station and there was no toilet and it was just the night. Pay. So I got the petrol, run the corner. I mean, it was kind of scrub land. I thought, I'm having a poo. Do you know, who's going to care? It's <laughs> half past 12 at night. Who's going to care? You having a poo? I had a pee. No, I'm no, I was going to say I'm not the poo outside stage yet, but <laughs> I don't have a choice for that sometimes. So anyway, I had a pee back in the motor. And uh, this, but in this car, and I was like, uh, I, I was very vaguely thinking, that's weird, that, car, that car's just been there all the way. And then after a while, I thought, are they following me? <laughs> and so I slowed down a bit, and it overtook me. Right, and I, I, This had been after about an hour for the petrol station. And it overtook me, I thought, just I'll let it just go, because it feels like any time I overtook something, it was overtaking something coming in behind me. So just driving on... And the next thing, the blue lights went on. And I went, no. What have I... Like, firstly, like, what have I done? And at one point, I had done something like... I had done 80 overtaking something, but this had been an hour before it, and I was like, it can't be that. And I was like, oh. I said, because I had a push. I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> pause for me because... So, in fact, the first thing I did was I slowed down to let the blue lights pass. I didn't even know for me. I'm like, carry on, officer. And they're like, no, on your way. <laughs> but this is on the motorway, and it's two lanes, right, in the A1. So they stopped me in a lane. Like, they stopped me. Uh, they come in front of me and stopped me. Right. Right? Well, they got right on in front the of lane. you. There's no, they, they didn't pull me over into the side. And then another set of blue lights come on behind me. So there was a police car in front of me and a police car behind me and stopped me on the motorway. <laughs> and what did they think you'd done? So I'm like, ah, what is going on? Next thing, a huge policeman comes to my door and tries to open my car door. It's a true story. Tries to open my car door. And he went, it went like that. And he went, pulled the door and then went, wind down the window. And I went, right? No, he went, unlock the door. No, this was a new car. Like, like a bit, so I was not used to <laughs> the buttons. And, buttons, and I'd locked it because it was in London. Uh-huh. They better lock the car door just in case you get carjacked. And they take, you know, they take, take your handbag from I, the front seat. Take, take my mm-hmm. like millionaire shortbread that I've got for the journey. In it, anyway. So I'm trying to it's like, unlock the door. I mean, I'm trying. I'm unlocking the door, and he opened the door and he went, um, "Step out of the vehicle." And I went, "Right." Get out the car and I turned in, and there were another six police cars. So it was one in front of me, one behind me, <laughs> and another five and a police van with the blue lights on. It was, I swear to God, it was a fucking line of duty <laughs> shot. I turned in and I went, they blocked the motorway for me. For you? <clears throat> and it was, <clears throat> they blocked the motorway for me. And see when I turned in, I had that second that you're like, ah, Oh. I just no information in my head like what is this and then my next thought was 
Oh, they've got the right person because see whatever they think I've done <laughs> for this, I know I've no done that. If it's no paying my poll tax, <laughs> so in 1989, this is no was a police van and motors are fine. They thought I was part of a, they thought I was the fucking ringleader of a carjacking <laughs> and car theft ring. In London. <laughs> How? Because when I had left London, a Range which I remember this like big fuck off Range Rover passing me because it was a huge big new and I was like ah. Do you know you just kinda of right. register that ah, motor. So when I'd left London they'd been tailing me all the way for there, so they'd saw us both at the same time and assumed that I was part of it. I wow. yeah, I mean they were dead apologetic and everything, but see that turn and run and it just and when I got back in the kit, and they were like, we're really sorry about this. And it was a nice wee policeman that came up with me. What is love? We've seen, we've clocked your car. And I was like, ah, I, I didn't think it was me. I mean, the other guy was like, ah, do you have a bag? I went, eh, yes, it is. I started answering like a robot. I was like, yes, it is in the front seat of the car. <laughs> <laughs> May we access that? Yes, you may access that. And somebody else went and got the bag. Hello there. Oh, lunch is oh, story. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I don't know oh, why you're getting that story, and I think this kid could be a better ending for it, but it was enough <laughs> that that was the... <laughs> Like the vest, I wish I took a photo here. Did Pack. you confess to the having Pultex. a out, no, not the Poltex? Did you <laughs> confess yeah. to having the pee outside the garage then to them? <laughs> to say because I can just officer, imagine you. I had a pish. Is that what this is about? Because <laughs> I, I can do community service or something. <laughs> you do get fined for that. Street. You do get fined for that. You can get fined for it. Mm-hmm. You can get done for that. You can unless you're a pregnant woman. Aye. Do you know is that true? Mm-hmm. Oh, is that? I didn't uh, know that. If you're pregnant, you can have a pitch well, for a very like. much. You said he was getting you dinner, so apparently... Uh, McDonald's. Can uh, I, can I we, we, McDonald's, we, we, no, I'm all right, We thanks. haven't even officially started. Hello, We're I'm Karen we, Bar. We, no, I do that. I'm <laughs> Karen. <laughs> we do a proper intro. I just got to just get on another side. I'm no Camden Bar. What were you going to say? <laughs> right, can we just, we'll just cut it here? Can we start the intro? Can we Go do the it. proper intro and all that kind of stuff? Are you ready? Uh, Yes, I didn't know if I was allowed to say in. What's your name? Hi, Ben. How you doing? He bought you a Happy Meal. Uh, that's made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll officially start now. We'll start with the titles. Yes, yeah, start with the titles. Kat, you ready? I'm ready. You're, you're ready, Karen? I mean, we've already done half a podcast with your story about the police. <laughs> it was a long story. <laughs> it's all right. Podcast can do whatever you like. So um, are we ready, Greg? Ready. Ben, we're ready? Yep. Right, lunch is here. Karen's ready. Let's do it. Like how we touch the anus. I mean, I just managed to make a career out of a coping mechanism. Get out the car and turned in, and there were six police cars for me. For you. <clears throat> the BBC producer knocked on your door in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Would you bring back the Karen and the Bar Show if you were asked? Would you bring back Tuna Fat if you were all to get together again? Hello and welcome to the You and Cat Uncut podcast. And um, I think you already know who's here because she, we couldn't shut her up. Um, she's well known for chewing the fat. She's well. No- Excuse me, Karen. I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't. You know, usually it's the other end that makes that much noise. I thought it was going. You know, you just do one. It's a wee bit of air and a taste. <laughs> You wouldn't do that in Kay Adams, would you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Kay and I are quite close. <laughs> it's Karen Dunbar, if you want. It's that as you mean to go in. You right, Karen? Um, when, when I messaged you to come on the show, you said to me, as long as you feed me. Did I say that? You said I'd as long as you feed me. So, so, so we got you a Happy Meal. It's going to open it. Yeah, you can open is this up. the adult Happy Meal? There's no such... Well, I don't know what Aye, you, there what, is. What, what, is there? Is there? Hi. What kind of plastic toy do you get in that? Well, that was what he said. Do you get like edible thong or something like that? Um, no, you get adult happy meals. Do you, yeah. know, do you know read Twitter? Um, right, so this the, the is my happy boys, meal the toy. I'm very about. disappointed with the first thing I've seen is apple. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, puts that. That's moist tissues. Um, Maybe that is the adult one. Is it a game thing? <laughs> no, even. Is it edible? Wee bag of chips, lovely. Some kind of burger. Nice. I don't know. actually have that. No, well, that's, that. Your, um, that's your dinner. I'll take it, thanks. Is it a cheeseburger? Uh-huh. But, uh, 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 
Do you, do, you want to, do you want to touch on the sore back or do you know what you talk about it? I even knew, I've got a sore back. I've can can, I, can, I, can I, um, do you mind if I play out your voice note? On you, on you go. Oh, but, but pathetic. It was not pathetic, but it's very sad. So at 20 past 11, right, this morning, I got a voice note from Karen Dunbar. Hold on a wee second. Mm. Hello. Ewan, I've done my back in. However, I'm on my way. So it's just to let you know. I'm in a lot of pain. I've got to try and live my life because I've got to get out and about. I've got lots to do today. So I'm on my way. I'm uh, slightly fragile. So don't be bounding up to me and sweeping me in your arms or you'll hear me screaming. Right, I shall see you at 12. Bye. This will be interesting. Bye. (laughs) So you're fighting your way through the pain right now. That's all right, because I was standing up, I was just about to go to the door, and I was like, I need to leave you a message to let you know I'm fucked. Because I'm... <laughs> um, I don't know about, and so when I'm moving about, it's really so you saw me get out of the car, it was like... So. Honestly, see, when you go out of the car, I was, I was like, I can't laugh. I, I can't seen, laugh. I was, I was in the train yesterday, and I was walking about, have you seen Homeland? I love Homeland. So do I. It's a great show. Uh, have you seen when Quinn gets poisoned with the yes. serin and then the next series is walking like that? <laughs> yeah. So I was walking about the tune yesterday thinking, I remind myself someday and it was Quinn. <laughs> like, like, walking like <laughs> What did you do? I, that is the best day. I don't know. I was in Manchester at the weekend and I had a case with me. Only a wee case. Mm-hmm. I picked it up and done a couple of times, but it's not as if it goes then. So I don't know if it's anything to do with that. And... Probably the thing is, without sounding too dismissive, it doesn't really matter because uh, working out what I did will not fix it. So it gave me extra heat stuff, you know, from like that. What was it I did? So it was nothing spectacular, but I, I injured it when I was in my 20s. Doing? Worked it? in big uh, PV speakers. Oh, because you were a mobile DJ, weren't you? Well, it was, uh, it was cabaret, darling. Cabaret. Oh, you're, you're a cabaret performer? In pubs, like that. Hello, here's a song. I don't know what it is that makes me love you. So, seriously. I was... Wait, wait, wait. Right, hold on. We've interviewed you loads of times on the radio. Mm. You didn't tell me you were a cabaret singer. I thought, you, I, I thought you were a DJ. <laughs> Aye. And, I mean, there's no much... I haven't even done I've never been a dancer. So did you start Stripping. off... Stripping. As... <laughs> Stripping. No, I've actually never been a stripper as well. So, are, are, you, are you telling me that you have... Um, You've been a performer in regards to cabaret singing before you became a DJ. Yes. So how did that come about? So I, uh, it was 1990, uh, end of 1990, so I was 19. And I was working in Bonkers, in Air, Bonkers Bar. Uh-huh. And my boss said to me, there's a thing coming out called karaoke, you can sing a bit, will you host it? And I said, aye. And so I started hosting a karaoke there, and I did that for a year. I'm telling you the short version. I did that for a year, and then when I left, when I left Bonkers, I went to the Prince's Trust, and I, this was in air, and asked them for a loan to start my own business, which they did for the young people, new businesses. So they gave me two grand, and I bought um, a load of PA equipment. So I bought an amp, speakers, mic, mic wow. stand. And did you have a stage name, or were you... No, I just carried them, I... So, so you you go and invest your money in this equipment. Mm-hmm. You become your own little business, mm-hmm. and you start touting your business around the bars and the clubs. Where in air, in air, in air, Garvin. A couple of stints in Garvin. Great was, pubs in Garvin. Was the money good? Well, I was n- at that point. I was twenty, so it was before I was twenty-one, and I would get a hundred pound a gig. Which fucking same as the do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that, back then, that's good money. <laughs> um, I couldn't believe it. See, the first one I did, I didn't know what I was getting paid because it was my pal's bar. And she says, come in and do a gig in the bar. And I did three years. I mean, I was like, say I started at nine and I finished at 12. And I would like have a 20 minute, two 20 minute breaks. Um, and at the end, she says, okay, that's for you. And she, and she gave me 80 pound. And I was like, ah, what's that for? Like and she'd booked me for like three nights and she went, That's for you and I went, For the three nights? She went, No, for the night. I actually remember sitting like that. I've made That's it. That's eighty pound. Um I had been getting and when I worked in Bonkers and when I was hosting the karaoke in Bonkers, I got two pound ten an hour before tax. That must have just felt like the big time then. It was I was minted. So they speakers which by the way, I've still got and they still work. Do you still use the them? Baby speakers. 
No, but I can't, I can't. I have a couple of times, Kat. Yeah. Uh, I had. I go to New Amp and that. But see, the speakers, I mean, it's not as if they're like state art speakers or anything like that. But if you want, boom, boom, they'll go for I, it. Um, and I never paid. It was a loan for the Princess Trust. It wasn't the funding uh, that I had to pay back. Have you paid it back? Pa- no, I paid, I think I paid £15. paid three instalments <laughs> and then I ran away to Glasgow. <laughs> then cut and that was without sounding too. That was in the back of my mind. He ran away from that. However, cut to the... It was the police. Did you hear that? Was that actually the same? I was excited. We tried to get on the way back to London with none of the pen I don't know. That's a confessed to fleecing the trust. trust. So, 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 so you... then I got a request in once two and the fact I was up and going for the Prince's Trust to be an ambassador and I was like, yes, I will. So oh, that's you paid tell back me then. Wherever. And the heads yeah. of the prince, no, no, the prince, prince, but one of the heads of them, I was sitting with them at a dinner and I told them this story and says, I never paid that back, by the way. And he was like, Sorry, I think you're right. I think you paid it back in UK and you're all right. And I was like, I'm my thank you. So I felt like my debt was cleared. <laughs> it's cleared. My conscience was cleared. <laughs> so that was when, 1991? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It was great. But then it was great in uh, teaching me how to. Training me, this is bogging. I don't mean the burgers bogging, I mean like me eating and folk are like, ah, wait a minute. Some folk get off in that. All right, well, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, everyone's got their own little kinks. Yeah. I mean, they all have their own little well, kinks. Well, what's yours? Don't they? Um, I like getting um, my feet massaged. No. I do like getting my feet massaged. It's... Well, is that just not like normal? Do you like how we touch the anus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about pegging or that. <laughs> You'd say to me, I can say what I like here. Anyway. <laughs> Do you know, just at the point of culmination. <laughs> Punk. Hey. hey. <laughs> you just laugh now, I'll eat my burger. <laughs> you do that. You noticed he's not answered. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because. <laughs> because. <laughs> see, to be honest. <laughs> I, just, I just. From my, massaging my feet to get a finger up my bum. No, 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 I never said that. It's just touching the rim. <laughs> and the reason he's no answered is because, Kat, who does he? I mean, you've no answer to either, so. <laughs> well, it's just. <laughs> we let that uh, settle, uh, and then we don't need okay. to answer. He looks just, quite nervous. Right. You're actually, well, you're you actually. It was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, good, it's just you've, you've taken me by surprise, right? Well, right. <laughs> so did the pinky. Right. <laughs> so, so, so you, you clearly have um, experience. Oh. I've ever marshal touched. <laughs> <laughs> This has gone down quite a different route. I don't know where to go with this. No, 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 you see, Dan, go just talk. <laughs> I'm just what I'm talking is I'm... You just talk. You, you continue to talk, but for you to just suddenly come out with that without really much prompting, and we weren't even talking about sexual things, just saying everyone's got a kink. You well, happened to mention the pinky. <clears throat> it was the word kink. Right. So kink usually pertains to something that's kinky. Getting your feet massaged is not you. We're just playing it safe because you like to look sanitised. <laughs> and I thought, why don't we just be honest here and talk about your asshole getting touched when you're at the, that point? Because who does not like that? <laughs> <laughs> not a, not a single person is answering you. Look at the toilet roll once you've wiped your ass. Do you know, Nate wants to talk about that, but everybody knows. Right, hold on, hold on. So, right, hold on. Take me back into some realm of decency. Right, hold on. Right, there are, there are. Right, we've, got, we've, we've got Karen Dunbar, we've got Kat Harvey, we've got Ben, and we've got Greg here in, in, the, in the studio where we are. Mm-hmm. And nobody wants to answer that question. <laughs> have, you right. no, have you noticed that everybody just sort of like, shh, doom, we're not going to go there, That's we're not right. going to talk about this. But for you to bring it up, because you have brought it up, mm-hmm. have you experienced this? As we all have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so don't... Uh, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm an interviewer as well. You put it back on them. <laughs> and then you let them leave it and then you don't have to... Do, I know it too well. I've, to, I've fucking had enough like, journalist interviews. I'm like, just ask them a question. <laughs> <laughs> I never asked you about getting your finger touched by your pinky. Your finger? 
See what I mean? He's getting, it's, uh, he's it's, getting confused now, Karen. You're getting flustered now. I feel mm. like I want to save him for something. <laughs> <laughs> himself. I'm save like, him from himself. Yeah, Ian, did you ever work for the Prince's Trust? <laughs> 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 Did you ever have a loan? You didn't repay, and then you were able to make uh-huh, good. Uh-huh. He's got a secret betting bet account. That bit I do know. Oh, for do you know, I have never been mm. into gambling. Well, I've never been into gambling. I like, played fruit machines when I was wee, but thank God. Like the Anyway, gambling addiction's never in that. I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. Doesn't matter. But, 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 um, oh, wow. <laughs> we went into right. quite a lot of stuff, haven't I've we? I've never seen him speechless before. Yeah, I, that's yeah, true. That's very true, Greg. I have not been this speechless, I think, in my entire career. You asked for Uncut. And, and, I, and I did ask for an Uncut podcast. I'm now regretting that decision. <laughs> <laughs> because people are looking at me right now on YouTube and thinking, yeah, he likes a pinky on the ass. <laughs> but it's the problem. Can I, can I just say I haven't admitted to any of that yet? Mm-hmm. I haven't. I'm not saying yay or nay to it. Because mm-hmm. if I say nay to it, they'll think I'm lying. If I say yay to it, they're going to think something anyway, so... But do you not think the problem is being a public figure, and especially a public figure, you don't know enough, like family listening to a radio show, and so you're <laughs> known for that. And I know I don't have quite that same degree of having to like, keep... And I said sanitizer. I don't mean that as an insult. It's just one of the words that's floating about the new. <laughs> but the, you've got to keep a certain profile and a certain persona. Yeah, but but see, see, I'm going to throw that right back at you. Cheers up. So Holly Willoughby, for example, mm-hmm. she'll do this morning and has this kind of like butter wouldn't melt in my mouth type mm-hmm. um, um, personality, and then she'll go into something like celebrity juice and swear like a trooper mm-hmm. and start licking Fern Cotton's tongue and feet and all that kind of thing. <laughs> so everyone has another side. So mm-hmm. that's why the punters who listen to us have always said to us for a number of years we'd mm-hmm. love for you to do a podcast or a show where it is uncut mm-hmm. so this is what we are doing mm-hmm. so they get the other side of us and the stories that we can't tell on the radio we can tell here on the podcast and we speak to people like yourself mm-hmm. or greg hempel or julie nimmo or marty pell or whoever it might be we get to hear the other side of them and not just a sanitized version that we can put out on the radio so I think they can distinguish between the two. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean by that? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Right, because of the, what you have just said to us now and what we're discussing at the moment, you can do that on the BBC. Well, not for long. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it once. It's a bit like flying. You know, when I came, I was like, I believe I can fly. I'm like, I once. <laughs> you know, you're off the building. Hey! And then there'll not be any more flying after that. No, there won't be. <laughs> That's so, your dinner ready. So, 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 do you think then that shows like this are good because it shows another side to somebody where you can be who you really want to be without anyone saying you can't say so you can't say that? I think it's largely it's a good thing, uh, partly for like folk punters to listen to, but also for the people that are being interviewed as well, because I don't find it as much. But um, and I'm not assuming that you do, but I'm interested. There's a question in here behind this rift. Excuse me. Is that the is that <coughs> the um, the milkshake coming back? It's a wee bit of the gherkin, to be fair. That'll oh, okay. be repeating in me all day now. <laughs> That's gherkins gain me jip. Um, <laughs> but what it's um, what the stress that is on public figures. And by the way, see nowadays who is near a public figure, so it's hard now to delineate what's a public figure and what isn't it. Because just pick your phone up and you can can become an instant public figure to a degree. Yeah. Um, but the stress that's on public figures to keep a certain persona, um, boundaries, things like that. And I, so I don't know about yous. And in talking about myself, I don't feel <laughs> I don't feel like folk have got much expectations of me <laughs> to be family friendly, if that's saying, because I'm mainly known for chewing the fat in the Candon Bar show. So even though Wayne's watched that, sometimes the comments so, that I get with that is, people... oh, shouldn't have been letting the Wayne's watch it, but they watched it and they loved it. Aye. See, when you meet um, people that are fans of these shows and things like that, what do you think they expect of you or are you to be like? Do they expect a kind of punchline in every every line? Like they or? expect me to be funny mm-hmm. and they expect me to be... Probably the words, <clears throat> something like zany, like right wacky. Aye. Is this an act? But everything's an act, Ewan. And what, I, don't, what do you mean? I don't mean to sound um, cynical, but it's just, see that phrase, she's honest, Jay, it's just be yourself. Like, A, how the fuck do you do that? <laughs> what does that actually mean? Yeah. B, 
and this is, I uh, don't feel this new, but I remember thinking years ago, why would I do that? Because if I am who I really am, and then people reject that, then uh, they're rejecting the real me. Whereas if I put on a facade and they reject that, I think, well, you weren't fucking rejecting me, you were rejecting something I made up. Do you think that's something that people... Deep psychological in... stuff now after the asshole touch I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening and watching the podcast. We'll be back with the show in just a second, but it's now time to play a little game with our friends from G4 Claims. Hi and welcome to G4 Play, the game that we play against a member of staff from G4 Claims. Yoon, who are you playing today? We are playing Rhiannon. Yay! Hi Rhiannon. Hi, Hi. Rhiannon. What, what do you do here at G4 Claims? Uh, I'm a claims handler, so I'll talk you through your road traffic accident and set you up in the higher and stuff like that. Wow. She sounds important. Yes. G4 Claims are winning 1-0 Oh no, you're winning Hold one. Hold on though. a wee second. I am winning one now. I, I beat the back. big I beat the big boss lady last week, so it is me that's one up. So Rhiannon, you're here for G4 claims to try and even the score. Rhiann? Rhiannon? Yep. Your your buzzer noise is ding ding. No, no. no. You're just ding. <laughs> oh ding. Sorry. No double dings here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I'm dong. Yes, you are. <laughs> you is dong. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm describing something. What am I describing? Here we go. It is purple. Purple. It's meant to be good for you. Dong. Yoon. What's that emoji thing called? Eggplant. Oh, I know, Prasheen. Ding. Grapes. Nope. It is a delicacy in Lanarkshire. And it's purple. It's purple. It is made by monks. Made by monks? Oh, eh. Uh, Cowpole? <laughs> <laughs> Puck, ding, ding, ding. No, 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 no. Cowpole! Cowpole made by monks! <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <Cut that. laughs> no, no, can't that. I want you to do it now. She had the ding. Buckfast? The answer is Buckfast. Yay! Yes. That's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> can I take you back to when you were growing up and the difficulties of that? Was that... Was part of your difficulties as a, as a, as a child growing up was your sexuality... No, when you, when you I mean, I wasn't a gay, gay. four-year-old. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Although, but, you can be, but I wasn't. No, but, but was at the time, because we're the same age, and I know what it was like in the, the, the mm. 80s, if you, if you were gay mm-hmm. um, or coming out, um, the difficulties. No, I was as a kid. I mean, I never came out until I was 19. Oh, was it 19 that you came? I thought it was Aye. earlier than that. No, but I mean, that was also, that was, that was relatively young, considering it was the... Uh, late 80s, yeah. like it was 1990. Yeah, totally. Um, that was young because most a lot of people, and especially I was in here, so a lot of people were like staying in the closet forever in case they get killed. Uh-huh. Kind of that thing. So, 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 so you did you know you were gay very early on in your childhood? When, See, when again, did you know? I think that's a question that I've answered to simply before just because. It almost feels like, and this is, I'm only talking about me and not taking away from anybody else's experience, and I really mean that. It's like no disclaimer to keep me safe. Um, but it's the idea that yeah, it was a Tuesday, and I just <laughs> woke up and I thought, I'm a gay. <laughs> right? And I just, um, and I wasn't it on the Monday, I knew I'm a gay. <laughs> It's, it's the, again, it's like the vanilla sky. It's like one uh-huh. day it was last and another day it was like that. It didn't, it didn't feel like that, knowing. Um, also, the level of internalised homophobia in me was so confusing. Really? Um, aye. Who is going to, uh, and I'm talking about myself, and I'm talking about being in a small town in Scotland in the early 90s, who wants to be completely different for other pals? Mm-hmm. And, like... Uh, like diametrically different, not yep. just like I've, I've got curly hair, right? <laughs> but uh, so spent at least the majority of my teens 
uh, sitting with them, looking at like looking at catalogues and braids things, and I'll be your bridesmaids, and you're going to be listening all that chat that seems to be whether you want it or no. Just what you date again. I can only talk about my own experience, and that's thirty year ago. Mm, but but, but, but ago. at that time, there was a lot of people who were pretending to be something they were not because society wasn't accepting of it. Did you have boyfriends and things? When Aye, you I was with... engaged. Yeah, a, a really lovely guy. So, I, so I went along with that, and actually, that's no like oh, the, that time. I loved him. Mm-hmm. That's no as if it was like what am I doing or anything like that. And at that, that, I mean, I've never fancied boys and that kind of, but I also, and I'm trying to put it accurately, I'm not trying to hedge in. Mm. I felt like, why do I, why am I attracted to, like, uh, <laughs> fucking the fleet girl, the advert, the, the ad, I mean, who <laughs> is not Those adverts were good. Is that the one in the bath? <laughs> Uh, no, no. Uh, where uh, she's in a boat or something, she goes under a, like a rowboat and she goes under a waterfall. Her, I'll tell you who else, and please laugh, enjoy this, Dana. Do you remember Dana? Dana from the Eurovision Song Contest? I think she looked like Snow White. <laughs> I did, and so I must have seen like Snow White and then thought that she was Snow White. In this. But it's that snow as well. It's the idea, I think, yeah. that uh, being gay, and I am not speaking for the gays, I don't even know if I'm speaking as a gay. Don't start me with that. But anyway. You're speaking as you. As it. As, no, I forgot what I was saying because I'm like, ah, I'll get shot. If the polis don't get me when I come out here, but um, I'll get, like, what happened to Karen? She was trampled to death at a Pride March. <laughs> um, <laughs> intentionally as well. Heels, the lot. Um, but as, it wasn't about... Sex or sexuality mm. uh-huh. with, with guys either. It was about being drawn to them. So whatever that was, and I remember talking to one of my pals <clears throat> who is extremely not gay and not in any anti way, but just, nah. <laughs> Why, do you know? Uh, and her saying, but can I like the French teacher? And blah, 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 you know, who was a woman. So having realising that we were kind of thinking the same things, it's just I went further and well, she went that that way and I went that way and yeah. Um, and there have been times throughout my life that I've questioned questioned my homosexuality, if you like, and thought because there's guys that I've met. I mean, let me see. <laughs> see if Brad Pitt when he was in Fight Club. Keep in my door. Actually, mate, Dave, he's visiting the south side. <laughs> and he had Jennifer Aniston with him. I'd be like, ah, in you come, Brad, and Jennifer, you can wait in the motor. <laughs> so, what does Would that you not mean? invite her in too? No, no, no. no. I, and I'm no, but I mean, fucking fill your boots, uh, whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> but, no, my thing. But, but not even no to watch. Thing. No, no. Uh, listen, I would tell you. Uh, uh, t- that's what I'm asking you, because no. I know you tell me. No, it so you've got, you've, so like I'm, no. We're, tra- we're, we're painting a picture now, right? You're sat in your house, you're in your goonie, mm. you're watching The X Factor, mm-hmm. knock at the door, mm. you open the door, Brad Pitt stood there, mm. looking like the boy from Fight Club. Fight Club, mm-hmm. Brad Pitt. Jenna Vanson from Friends has stood there next mm. to him. Karen, can we come in? You know why mm. we're here. You would, you, <laughs> you, you would say, sorry... Um, Jennifer, this is not for you. Well, I mean, if it was raining and that, I'd say, you can come in, Jennifer, get away, <laughs> and, eh? Go in the kitchen and make yourself something. And a wee hot drink, a wee tea or something. And put these headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> the noise cancelling <laughs> headphones. Do you know the best yet? Either way, the, fucking if the postman came to my door, I'd shite myself. <laughs> it's not even about a blast. Not today, thanks. I was out in Manchester, and I was out, I went out myself, I went out in the gay scene, and I went out for just a wee nosy because I used to get quite a bit in the gay scene. Oh, <laughs> fuck's sake. I was out for 40 minutes and I sat and I watched in Canal Street and I've been out quite a few times there but it's been years. Canal now. Street's brilliant. I've Canal been there Street's many times. Great. And I just sat, I was sat at a table, like one of the tables that had been used for dining it was sitting at the other side of the canal. just sat on it and I watched and I was like, ah. <laughs> it's no, I don't belong here but it was like, I cannot see myself anywhere. I can't see any older women who are no quite femme Kicking about at all. Not that that's necessarily what I was looking for. Oh, I'm saying is, you know, when that way you're like, I'm I'm the only one here like me, 
And yeah. I sat for half an hour. And I mean, it was great. And the vibe was great. It's not as if I was sitting to press the hand just a lot. It wasn't at all. Then I went into the women only bar, right? The vanilla. Mm-hmm. I went in there. Music's like... Oh, <laughs> It was great music, but I was dead aware. I was like, ah, oh, it's far too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I need a seat. I went up the stairs. There was a wee stair, but I went up. And there was hardly anybody there. It was a wee bit busy up doing the stair. But there was many guys as there was lasses. And I don't know, like, who was gay, who was straight, who was whatever in the middle, or any gay dar. God, man. So I stood and I just watched and I was, I was enjoying it. And the only uh, action that I got was a young black gay guy felt my arse. <laughs> Which I actually enjoyed. <laughs> it kind of went, I don't know if it took so it kind of went by and it was a sweep it was near an accident because I did have a wee was that an accident that was a feel but it wasn't a wasn't grabbing a cheek. It was, it yeah. was just a kind of cupping. Mm-hmm. Right? Cupping. Like, uh, mm. And I actually I was leaning, he did it <laughs> and I, I did I didn't even look at him, I just went Oh, fair enough. <laughs> that yeah. happened. Um, so, what was my point in that? But I, have you got a partner? I don't even know. No, this. No, no, I don't. No, right. So it's that idea of, and this is no fitting in my any agendas mm-hmm. or or being any anti. Uh, my kid can't take the amount of, uh, if, if you like, choice or sides or everything that's going right. on in the news. So, as you said, there will just be as you. And so, as much as I can, when you said, "Is this real?" Me saying, "No." Uh, it's as real as it can be for me sitting here the noon talking unedited. So see when you came out of lockdown and you said it was it was telling you you couldn't go back to the way things were. Mm. Um where are you heading now? What are you doing now? Um well, the started uh, and I'm telling you short versions of this, and then you can ask me questions because do you know what I'm like? I ask me a time, I'll tell you where the watch was made. <laughs> <There's>, um, <laughs> uh, What's the time? Uh, uh, actually, I didn't want to get an Apple Watch, but I ended up. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what it's like? Uh, see? Um, <clears throat> Uh, so what's the bullet points of this it had been in my mind for years I wanted to do something with music in some way that and in the community and I didn't even know what that meant and I never even pursued it more than that even in my head because I was too busy um, anyway lockdown comes this idea comes back to me spoke to one of my pals she says what would you like to do I says I don't know this is some kind of like rap writing or something I don't know Rap writing or something, I don't know. She says, my pal works with a group of refugees. We all got on Zoom, because we're locked in. Uh, we all got on Zoom. They managed to get top-up cards for their phones, so they were talking about, like, Lassie's Ferran and Castle Milk and things like that on their phones. Um, and actually started off to them. I says, hello. I says, they had no idea who I was. Didn't know me for a hole in the wall. So there's no expectation of anything at all. They haven't they seen just, you in Tune the Fat. They haven't seen you the no. Karen Dunbar show. They've they seen they none of this. They just arrived. Right. <laughs> and all they know is they're in this flat and they've got, like, it's the whatever the community group was that they're mm. helping them out. And they've managed to get top up hangs, and there's some kind of music thing on on Tuesday at one o'clock, and I'm sitting who's my laptop, so I'm like, hi, and they're all like, hello, hi, and everything sort of like bit of problems with the phone, and then it's coming, and everything. And I'm like, so I'm Karen, and like, hi, Karen, get with their names and that, um, and I says, uh, by the way, I says, I don't know what I'm doing. Right, and I, I says, I could imagine them going, well, we don't know what you're saying. So <laughs> this is all equal here. <laughs> when that I developed, what was workshop is a weird, uh, a weird way to put it, but I don't have any, a better word than that. So there's some kind of workshop where we write a rap together. And that, somebody else then, I tell somebody else was doing it, and they went, come and do it for our group, that are the creative writing group. Maybe they would be interested in that. Da, 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 da. And I thought, this will give me a reason to live uh-huh. during the lockdown, like to get out of my bed, because I was making all the music for it as well. And at that point, I don't play any instruments. And at that point, I had a work, a, a rudimentary knowledge of Garage Band. Do you know the app that's on? Yeah. yeah. I was like, bit, bit, with Garage Band. That's really good, that. And you can make a ringtone. That was the, the level of knowledge I had. <laughs> now I was starting to go, how do I sample, blah, blah? How do I make that? And how do I? So I got lost in YouTube videos with Garage Band as well, watching loads and loads of stuff to try and make the music for them. If a BBC producer knocked on your door, in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is he here? Is he actually here? But, but, but you but, like Jonathan, I didn't know you were there. I didn't mean that about assholes and things. <laughs> but as you well know, as we all know here in the studio just now, 
there's a lot of things that are making a comeback. You look at what Netflix are doing, they're regurgitating lots of TV shows, etc., 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 etc. The BBC have been looking at different things, they're bring, bringing like blankety blank back, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Would you bring back the Karen and Bar show if you were asked? Would you bring back Tuna Fat if you were all to get together again? I'm no pausing for effect. I'm, I, um, so that there is parts of me, right? Nostalgia's huge just now. People parts are going me, back. So there's a part of me that goes in a heartbeat. And that would be for the love of the show. And that's... Uh, I really loved it. We know that, but I loved it. Which you right? in the fact and Karen and Bar show. And the Bar show. Candle Marshall was much harder work because it was Candle Marshall. Yeah, yeah you know? names yes. on the door, so, and and the, so the amount of uh, sketches that I got went for having that today in six weeks to that. To right? Lord's I side. actually remember walking away for the first uh, read through the Candle Marshall with the scripts for the, the you get the big load of the scripts for the series, and I, I, the actual weight of them, and I thought I can't do this. I <laughs> so was like, I can't do this. You anxious about it? Aye, aye, but. Uh, it's like anything, do you know, bite sized chunks, you break it down and you're doing it a sketch at a time. Mm-hmm. And, and those sketches are so all over TikTok just now. Was that? Those those sketches are all over TikTok just now. There's oh, loads know, of your sketches I everywhere. Um, I mean, and, no, I just watch myself. And, and, and the kids today are watching you. Aye. And it's always about the ice cream, isn't it? It's all that Aye. stuff. Well, it's, but it's some, it's, there's some unusual stuff. I mean, see yeah. that one that, re, that went viral, which was I'm your new Auntie Moira, the one. I watched that. Part of me, I wasn't angry, but I was like, oh, it's a fun, be a fun, funnier things. It was a Samoyer sketch. There's funnier, there's funnier ones. I'm shouting. What, what was your favourite ones? There's funnier ones. Um, uh, favourite character? Um, see, I've got, I, I, I can't be, it was like favourite sketches. I can't I mean, mm. see one with Betty in the bath and it's just, like, it's got the tattoo. So it's just a wee quick one. And he's like, uh, and it's Paul Riley that plays Winston. And he's like, uh, oh, Betty says, I love your tattoo there. And it says, I love Bobby. And he says, who's Bobby? And she says, anybody's Bobby. Anybody's Bobby. <laughs> that, because it's just, that there's a, and this is not about me, there's a perfection in it for the beginning, middle end. Da, da, da. And it's just quick. Absolutely. It's spot on in a tiny wee concentrated, like Kylie Minogue. Bonk, tiny, perfect. Bonk, there you are. Got you it. what's happening. Um, so it's wee bits like that. So you've not answered the question. What is, what did, so I was... I'm, I'm still the on fat, it. Karen Dunbar show, they want to bring it back for a one-off season. Do you say yeah or nay? If, it, if, it's, if it's good... Sorry. If it's got to be an I or no, then I would say, I would say aye. You would do it. I would the, do the, it. The reason that I wouldn't want you to do it is because I don't think it'll ever be as good as what I remember it to be. And I totally agree and with I, that. And I think it would probably damage the the heritage of the brand, or would it not? Well, yeah, it would be different because comedy's changed. I mean, you did an entire programme in that about getting cancelled and some of the sketches that you did back then that you couldn't even put out now. I don't think it would be as good to our generation. And I don't... Th- I, well, to the majority... Well, to us. Yeah, and, that's right. the thing. Yeah. And the reason, largely, wouldn't it be because of the writing or the performance or blah, 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 it would be that... And I'm talking about myself, right? So if I was thinking about... Because oh, they did Friends again, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and watching that. I know, my face would be all shaped for joy. You know, It's on, it's back on. And you're watching it going, why is Monica doing that? Why it, <laughs> she doesn't look right? Right, so because it's an imprint of a memory for fucking twenty years ago yeah. that uh, that that's uh, that's in conflict there. Know what I'm actually seeing the news because it's not the same. Um, so it wouldn't be the same. But I'm, I would be confident, not cocky, but confident that there would be another generation of people or another group of people watching it um, that would enjoy it. But wouldn't matter. I would get paid. And that would be the main reason. <laughs> Some money. Has, has, has there ever has, has there ever ever been chat about doing that? No, never. I'm saying that, and I'm no hiding. Then, but I'm, at the same time, I'm no indiscreet. So I would, if it was something that I didn't feel that like I should tell you, then I would probably say I'm not going to tell you that. So I'm I'm going through the annals of my mind to know. Uh, did we ever talk about that? Mm. I mean, firstly, it's not as if we're all hanging about together every Saturday or something like that, although I actually <laughs> do see Ford quite a lot. Um, and Julie came to my discotheque, so I, I'm, look, I'm like, and I'm past with Julie and Greg as well. I mean, I, I, I like them, it's not as if I like anybody else, but anyway, what's the point I know of that? It's not as if we're all hanging about together talking. Um, I'm even thinking when we did still game live and if there was any talk, like, we should still bring this up. So there's been nothing like that. 
There's right. been nothing like that. It's just kind of sad in a way as well, isn't it? I don't know. Would you want to bring back friends? Who would want to, I mean, friends. I think you'd be interested on. to see what they, where they were, but you're right. They ended it perfectly. It was like a very big full stop. So. Aye. And what I would, be, I mean, like, what would you say? We'll bring back Still Game and we'll do it as if they hadn't died, like Bobby in the shower in Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you know, see what? Well, who I, wants I, that? I, I, because I, it's a lot of emotional investment in the yeah. ending of something as well. There, there was talk that they were going to do a prequel. Aye, aye, I to would love game. to see that. Would you Would you be interested to watch a prequel of Still Game when they were younger? Mm. Do you think that would work? Aye, because I love the, the, characters. The, the, actors, the characters, the actors, the story, the ethos, the blah, blah. So what I would, what I would like to uh, date, maybe even if it was a one-off, and I'm not putting this out there like, oh, it's really like you do this and then get it written. It doesn't feel like it's, the, the onus is on that because I'm too busy as well. If I got to do something. You could do something in a minute. Just finish right. what you say. Um, would be I would like to see the Cam Bar show and and some of the main characters in that how they are new. You know, so Shirley's Josie and see like, did she get sober? Did yeah. she get a man? Did she ever have shoes on? If, Angela and Ricky, do you know? Did they stay together? Did they get aye. divorced? Where's the they on a cruise ship? Would you know what you do with that? And mm. I think this would work. Is if you did the Karen Dunbar show, past and present, so you'd play. A mm. sketch of the past, and then you fast forward to the future of that particular sketch, mm-hmm. and you're playing it as of today. So it reminds people of the past of that character, mm. and here they are today. So mm-hmm. you get the classic sketch, and you get a new sketch with it. Aye, but who but then the old the telly? Would Who's be watching a... the telly? Well, but, 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 uh, but, but the thing is, though, they watch the telly. No, but. Uh, no. TV as it stands right now in regards to BBC One, BBC Two, no, they're, they're, they're getting on the iPlayers and the STV players, etc., etc. Yep. Netflix streaming, so mm. that's where people consume their uh, their media now when Aye. it comes to that. So I think that would be a good idea. I think you'd pitch that to the BBC, and if and if it Bless you. and if it gets commissioned, remember where you heard it first, which was here from me, right? The past and the present of the Karen Dunbar show. And what was the thing I said? I made a career out of coping mechanisms, so that's mine. <laughs> Is we'll it? see who makes the most money out of that. It'll be you. Be um, so, um, b- before we end the podcast... I mean, this has been, this has been too existential. This is a, has, it been, has it been too highbrow? What, what you're so let me, With my let happy me, meal and my anal sex. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, your weekend? <laughs> happy meal and some anal sex, please. Be £2.40. <laughs> right. right, Karen, Karen, we always end the show... Right, with the bowl, of, with the bowl of destiny. Right, and in the, in the bowl of destiny, we have a number of questions. Okay. You can, when you pick the first question, you can have a look at it. All right. If you don't like that question, you can forfeit it. But okay. you must answer the next question. Danny you pick. Must I'm, not even, I'm not even threatened by the question. I'm just like, you might need your specs. Well, you could pick them out and I can read them for That'd you. That'd be you good want. if your eyes work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> You're back. So All pick right. a question. Have a look at it. Right. right. Have a wee look at it, um, and if you don't like that question, then you will pick another one, but you then have to answer that second question. Okay. Bowl of Destiny. Don't read it out. Do you like the question? Well, um, it's not quite a long question, so give it, and I'm 51, so give me a second. Right. Okay. <sighs> mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's a good question. So do you want to answer you, that one? Or do you want, want to tell you what the question is? I'll answer it. you yep. answer it, right? okay, read so it what, out then. What is the question I, mean, I don't then? know what the answer is yet, but I'm up for the question. Go on then. <laughs> If you were to trade bodies with someone of another gender for a day, what's the first thing you would do? So, a man for a day, probably, I I mean, what's the first thing I would do? It's almost quite tame. I'd be like, scratch my balls or something. (laughs) Um, Do you know, I'm like, ooh. (laughs) That's what that's like. (laughs) Or, do you know, go and have a pee standing up and go, see, (laughs) now fucking, how much easier this is? That's, I, I mean, you almost want to give me an air question for a better answer. All right, then. Yeah. <laughs> you want to? No problem. We're breaking I, the rules. It's, it's, I'm not. I know we've never done two before. Um, but it's just to prove it wasn't about gender. No. Uh, right, and that, that's a bit better. This is a happy note to end on. Okay. Hey, which song always makes you feel better when you're feeling down? Uh, the bar's rhythm of the night. For the beat to the rhythm of the night. Dancing to the morning light. Forget about the words. <laughs> And leave them open. <laughs> <laughs>
That's my ringtone. Oh, that was great. When so, the phone goes off, somebody like, oh, I'm sorry, but it is the bars <laughs> rhythm of the night. And I'm just like, it's all right. It's funeral. <laughs> See, before we um, end the show, um, over the end, Titles Cat plays a wee tune on our, um, on our kazoo. Mm-hmm. So I think it could well be Rhythm of the Night, Rhythm of the night by yes. DeBarge. Yeah, I want to know, ultimately, though, just before we finish, what is going to make you the happiest then? What, what's the like the next couple of years? What What's missing that you want in your life? Right. Uh, I, well, uh, no, this is true. I know it sounds dead wanky, but this is true. Mm-hmm. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and it was this woman, she was in her 70s, and she was talking about <clears throat> growing up in San Francisco, 1960s, hippie, drap massed, everything, looking for enlightenment, big peace, love movement. Anyway, she doesn't find it there, so she's away to India, right, to find this guru that everybody's talking about, goes there, she's been doing meditation, everything, trying to fucking get enlightened. And she goes to see the guru, uh, and he's like, ah, right, have a seat, and she says, I'm trying to get into meditation. She's like, ah, I'm not talking about meditation, just sit, sit, just sit there. Uh, he says, what do you want? She says, I just want peace. He says, right, sit for a while. He says, I'm trying to meditate. Again, he's like, ah, stop meditating. That's like, guru, stop meditating. Just be. She says, so I ended up, I just sat there for a while. She says, I sat for about 20 minutes. I'm just like sitting. And she went, oh, I don't want it. <laughs> and I went, that's it. That's <laughs> it? That's it. Just I want, not you want. Yeah, the contentment <sighs> of just being. And I'm no far off that. That's generally. good. I mean, I don't want to say it back the now, do you know? No. But it's that kind of thing rather than, <sighs> see if I just had, I hear that now and I'm like, moan will unpack that, Cam, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and, and see where it goes and see by the end of it, I'm like, ah, I don't want that. <laughs> do, you get it from your, do you get it from your friends? Because like, I get it from my friends because I'm, I'm single at 50, right? Mm. And I wasn't for a long, long time and I, I get so many people, you know, are you okay? Mm. And I am. I am and I'm no. Mm. And again, without sounding too schism to that, part of me is like that, loving it, the farting in bed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The, that's when my shoes are, who cares, we lying there, don't need to, all that kind of stuff. And there's another bit, which is a natural human instinct to couple up. Yeah. Do you know? Companionship. The, the ha- yeah. That happens there to come and go, you will not believe what she just said to me. <laughs> and, and they're like, ah, right, even if they're not listening to you, you've just got that kind of thing there. Although I've got great pals that I can do that way, but it's yeah. that instant, it's almost that reciprocation. It's the, it's the deal that you make in that. Yeah. I'm coming and tell you all my shit. You tell me all yours. Neither one of us will listen to each other, but we'll do it. So it's more like if the right person comes along rather than you're sitting going, I'm desperate for somebody. Aye, and what the right person would be. And I don't mean that in a perfectionist mm. way or that. It's just like, you I don't wait, even know what that... Are you waiting for Brad Pitt to knock on your door? Could be, could be <laughs> Brad Aniston. <laughs> some kind of hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> TFTL. <laughs> Do you know what that means? No, I don't. That's fanny the lot. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> we will been... say thank you to Karen Dunbar. <laughs> It's been a mixture of guttural existentialism. I think <laughs> it's I, a little bit of everything, isn't it? I think I've loved every second of that. Yeah, and, always... I'm, and I'm never going to answer the question about the pinky. Well, we both know the answer, don't, don't we? we? Because we all know. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know that you like it, and you don't need to tell anybody. <laughs> you just need to know that you know, and we know. Okay, so Kat has now got her kazoo at the ready, uh, and Kat is going to end today's podcast mm-hmm. with a. A version of the bar's rhythm of the night, Thank right. you, which I, I will be playing at my disco on the twenty second. I've no plugged that, and I will we'll plug, plug that. Plug it then. Oh, my discotheque. I'm doing a disco for old people, so anybody over twenty five, <laughs> um, or and more. Twenty second of December, oh, seven o'clock till party. eleven o'clock. Christmas big, party, big get Christmas in. night out. Yeah. So. and cheesy tunes, all the kind of great 70s, hits. Eighties, nineties, the occasional Lizzo. Oh, <laughs> and a lot of Lizzo. <laughs> A little bit of Lizzo, a lot of Lizzo. 22nd of December, um, Karen Dunbar, DJing at Oran Moor. Come, aye. Go and get tickets now. Go and get tickets. We've done it a couple of times. It's been brilliant. A brilliant night. So So please come to that. I'll play um, his rhythm of the night, but no as good as this. Well, um, I would like you to join in, if you wouldn't mind. Do do you want me to, like, kid on my kazoo or sing the song? No, you go... (laughs) <laughs> you, you take it away and I'll join in because right. I feel like it's your when tune. When it feels like I'm actually going to wait, wait, I'm going to sing it right. Okay. Oh, oh don't hurt yourself. So um, b- b- before uh, before um, Kat plays a retune, round of applause for Karen Dunbar. Yes. Thank you, Karen. And it's over to Kat Harvey. Mm-hmm. 
In fact, let's do it. When it feels like the world is on your shoulders And all of the madness has got you going crazy It's time to get out Step out into the street where, where all of the action Is right there at your feet Well, I know a place where we can dance the whole night away Underneath the electric stars just come with me and we shake your blues right away. We'll be doing fine once the music starts. Push your beat up. Uh, Here we go. Oh, oh, feel the beat to the rhythm of the night. Dance until the morning light. Forget about the words on your mind. You can live them all. Hard to get the last two. <laughs> <laughs> that was great.